Hi everybody and welcome to this screencast on skin structure and function. Uh, we're going to take a look at the skin and its role in a larger picture of the body's defenses. And we'll look at all of the functions and the specific structures that are used for those functions. But to begin, we're going to take a look at the top layer of skin right here. It's called the stratum corneum and it's the layer of skin that you lose millions of cells every day. And by the time they're at the very top layer, though, they're just dead. They're just um, shells filled with a hard chemical called keratin. And we're going to take a look at why those skin cells are like that in a later slide. But let's begin by taking a look at the first function of the skin, and perhaps the most obvious, and that's protection. And so the skin is divided into three layers to offer uh, protection. So we're going to label those here. And the first outermost layer is referred to as the epidermis. The middle layer and the thickest layer is the dermis. And finally, the bottom layer, which really by definition isn't part of the skin, but we always usually teach it in conjunction with the skin, is the hypodermis. You can even see this prefix hypo coming back again, just meaning too low. It's the lowest level of the, of the integument. But collectively, those all work to offer protection. Now let's just look at the top layer, the epidermis. And so you can kind of see here, uh, if we peel back the epidermis from the dermis, um, what we're left with is this. So I'm going to kind of make a bracket here. And all the way down, these little valleys and um, hills are all part of the epidermis. And so my bracket kind of shows you the epidermis. And so the one function of the epidermis, or the both, one of many functions is waterproofing. And that's done through the work of these special cells called keratinocytes. And those keratinocytes start way down here at the bottom of the epidermis, and they're consistently and constantly dividing. And so you can imagine as time goes on, those cells get pushed farther and farther to the surface. Now in addition, as time goes on, these cells are producing a chemical called keratin. And this keratin slowly fills up those cells, and, and the organelles get discarded, so all that's left is that empty shell and the picture that you saw on the last slide. And so um, that's one reason why our skin is so waterproof tight, is because those top cells, those top layers of cells, are all filled with keratin. Another function of the epidermis is UV protection. And um, so we see here, kind of the same area as those keratinocytes develop are another type of cell called a melanocyte. And that's this guy here um, in brown, looks like a giant monster. I suggest you maybe be him for Halloween some year. And these melanocytes are producing a pigment, and that pigment is known as, let me get my cursor, is known as melanin. The more melanin you have in your skin cells, the darker the skin. And so you can see here, some um, pigments of, of melanin in these cells. Um, and that helps to block the, the sun's UV rays from hitting the DNA in those cells and protecting the DNA from getting mutated. And so originally, the individuals with darker skin lived in warmer climates with more exposure to UV sun, and so they had more melanin for, to protect their DNA from damage from the sun. Um, but I do want to take this moment to talk about a specific type of skin cancer in our melanocytes, and that's called melanoma. And so this is cancer of the melanocytes. And so this is why you get, you know, check, the, check all of your moles to see if they're suspicious, if they're changing color or shape. And basically it comes down to these guys are dividing that, they're not dividing right. There's a mutation in their DNA. And so the protein that those cells make, the melanin, isn't being made properly. And so we get those disfigured and discolored um, pigment shapes because we can see that our melanin is not made properly. And that means that there's something going wrong in the melanocytes. And that all happens in the epidermis. Moving on to the thicker layer, the dermis, so the first function we're going to take a look at is elasticity. However, before we really jump into the dermis here, I did want to talk about blisters. This is kind of an interesting little tidbit here. Blisters actually develop because friction between the epidermis and dermis here builds up fluid 
and really does separate the, the um, dermis from the, the epidermis. But if we just look at the dermis itself, the dermis is filled with these collagen and elastic fibers. You can kind of see them right there. There are all these, these lines in the dermis. And so the elastic fibers do just that. They're really stretchy. And the collagen fibers are tougher and so that your skin isn't just super stretchy, that there is some limit to the amount of stretch. stretch. The next function of the dermis is thermal regulation. And there are three structures in there that relate to this function. Um, the first structure that I'm just going to point out, and this one should be pretty obvious, I hope, are hair follicles. Clearly, they're going to help to, to thermal regulate and keep us warmer. The second are sweat glands. And I'm actually going to add a sweat gland into this skin cube. This is exactly what they look like, this ball of squiggles. And then they go up to the surface. Sweat glands obviously produce sweat to cool us down. And the last structure in thermal regulation are blood vessels. And blood vessels um, can do two things for us. Notice they're only found in the dermis. So if you ever cut yourself and it's just thin enough, it only breaks the epidermis, you actually won't bleed. But back to the blood vessels here. If we want to cool down, we, we will increase blood flow to these blood vessels. If we have more blood going to the surface, it's going to cool our, our blood down. On the other hand, if we want to stay warm, we decrease blood flow. So that means we have less blood going to our surface, less heat escaping, and more heat stays in our core where it's needed more. All right, finally, we're into the last dermis function, and that's sensory reception. Fancy way of saying touch. So there are different types of touch sensors in our um, integument. And so we can see the names aren't necessarily as important as knowing that there are different degrees of pressure that can be detected, and there are different sensors for that. And so we have the, the tactile corpuscles, which are the light touch receptors, and the ones that are embedded deeper in the dermis, the lamellated corpuscles for deep pressure sense. And the last layer of skin is the hypodermis. And it is filled with adipocytes. Adipocytes are these yellow structures all down here. And they're a fancy way of saying a fat cell. And so um, adipocytes serve as an energy reserve because we know fat does serve that function and as well as insulation. So that's a, a look at the different layers of the skin uh, and their specific functions as well as the structures that are related to that function. And I hope you found that helpful.